I don't know how much I've talked about it in the past, mostly because I just don't talk about the Empire all that much, but the Cult of Ulrich is my favorite sub-faction within Imperial Borders, and if you happen to see the Tudican Guard video I made with Invicta over on his channel, I like to think that love came through. Never seen it? Highly recommend you go watch it. I do think it's some of the best work I've ever done on YouTube, and it wouldn't have been possible without my friend Oakley and all his expertise on the video making side. But needless to say, the Empire is pretty cool. Their simple, badass humanity is the reason they are, and always will be, the most popular race in Warhammer. But they've never been my favorite, and even after Thrones of Decay and whatever else they get in the future, they still won't be. But I will start liking them a lot more as a race when the White Wolves of Middenheim make their inevitable appearance, and Toddy finally has his day. That's going to be the topic of the video here, a full breakdown of the Cult of Ulrich, what's special about them, why they are important for the combined campaign, and when exactly I expect them to come. It's a bit of a strange juxtaposition, because for those of you who know 40k, you know that the Cult of Ulrich are quite literally just the Space Wolves of Fantasy. All the Viking Wildman bravado, the plaited beards, the doggo motifs, all the focus on winter and war, just look at their official artwork and see why it's kind of a struggle to tell them apart. And yes, lots of flanderization too. Wolf this, wolf that. Can't pretend like those teams first came into play with Kislev, Ice, and Bears. It's not a new thing with this setting. But yeah, it's weird because the Space Wolves are one of my least favorite loyal legions in 40k, but I adore the Cult of Ulrich and Fantasy, and I think they're going to bring a lot to the game for the Empire when they come. So, first things first. Are they coming in Thrones of Decay? Probably not. I don't think we should entirely rule them out yet, but as I've stated, I do believe Thrones of Decay will focus more on Nuln and Elspeth Von Draken, Jubal Falk, and the Nuln Ironsides when it drops in December of this year. Reason one, being their rivalry with Tamarkan, and reason two, being their emphasis on engineers and toolboxes, which was the hint given to us for the Dwarf Legendary character, coming in the same update. Master Engineers would be a reasonable character choice to mirror that for the Empire, while Theodore Bruckner on his Demigraf Reaper could potentially make it in as well. The counter-argument to that is that the Empire has a limited number of updates remaining, and while that number is almost certainly more than one, as this trilogy winds down, there will be a finite number of opportunities to get the units and characters people want and expect. C.A. Rich, head of the DLC and new content team for Warhammer, has said multiple times that Toddy will have his day, and that he finds the Cult of Ulrich an interesting and worthy inclusion in the trilogy, which means they're extremely likely to come at some point, we just don't know when. That point could potentially be before the end of this year. Also important for me to note that fully themed sub-faction expansions aren't even all that common as DLC anyway. Usually there's a lord, a hero, and maybe one or two units on top of that related to a certain theme, like Clan Ashen with Shadow and the Blade, but it's generally not a top-to-bottom reconstruction of a sub-faction where everything is all tied together. What we're talking about here for the Cult of Ulrich would be just as in-depth as Deathmaster Snickich and the Assassin Rats of the Far East, perhaps even more so, so it wouldn't shock me if it never came down to a complete Cult of Ulrich appearance, but rather just some specific units and characters alongside a wider and more general Empire update. For this video, though, we're going to operate under the assumption that Creative Assembly finds the Cult of Ulrich so engaging, so utterly sensual and furry, they go full Red Rocket and give us everything all at once, sometime down the line after Elspeth and Nuln have had their time in the sun. Now, the Cult of Ulrich is essentially the binding agent of the Northern Empire, the official doctrine and clergy of Middleland, and the second most influential religion in the Empire after the Cult of Sigmar. It is an ancient creed, almost unchanged in practice for more than 2,000 years, a church built on war, embodying all of mankind's courage, strength, and resilience in the face of overwhelming odds. Their war god Ulrich is a harsh, savage deity associated with winter, wolves, and wilderness, and takes on almost a Viking-like, barbarous visage that reflects the rage of the Berserker tribes just north across the Sea of Claws. The whole thing with Ulrich is that his people, the Tudigans, have been around for millennia, and his faith was established well before even Sigmar rose to godhood, though it wasn't formalized and codified into a doctrine and organized religion until the decades following Sigmar's coronation as first emperor. It's an almost entirely martial faith, the driving philosophy behind it being cardio beats chaos, and to beat chaos, 
You bash their brains in with gigantic warhammers. And in that sense, everything they do is focused around heavy armor, melee, great weapons, and matching the fury and ferocity of the Norse blow for blow style of combat they are very much well equipped for. The spiritual figurehead of this church is the Ar Ulrich, the High Priest of Middenheim, one of the most influential and prestigious positions in the entirety of the Empire of Man. The dude chosen for this role wields vast political power as an elector, as well as theological influence over the nature of their doctrine, and the authority he has over matters both religious and secular is perhaps rivaled only by the Grand Theogenist of the Cult of Sigmar, Volkmar the Grimm, and the Emperor Karl Franz himself. The current standing Ar Ulrich is Emil Volgir, a former Tudigan guard and Grand Master of the Knights of the White Wolf, a character famous for smacking Hargroth the Blooded's head so goddamn hard with a warhammer that it was driven into the Coronate Champion's chest like a Mortal Kombat fatality. So yeah, he's kind of a badass, but that also comes with its own set of quirks and challenges, and as expected within the Empire, there's a lot of chafing and friction between certain factions, and he's a big source of that behind the discord between Ulrichans and Sigmarites. Religious zealots and fanatics tend to not see eye to eye on matters of faith, even when they share much the same philosophy. The cool thing about being the R. Ulrich is that when politicians are gridlocked at court, unable or unwilling to deal with external threats, he can call the banners of the largest knightly order in the old world, the Knights of the White Wolf, to deal with invaders, and if that's somehow not enough, his influence also extends over the state troops of middle and standing armies and hordes of religious zealots eager and willing to march on crusade. Beneath the Ar Ulrich are the various high priests in charge of each major temple and sanctum, and the Grand Master of the Knights of the White Wolf, commanding the military wing of the church. Below them are the Den Fathers, deputy clergy that administer rites and govern the day-to-day -day operations of each holy site, controlling priests, initiates, and acolytes of the cult. Temples dedicated to the Imperial God of War exist throughout the Old World, but the Eternal Flame at the Fauchlag's peak above Middenheim is undeniably the cult's greatest wonder, and it is here that the elite Tudigan Guard keep vigil. Drawn from the off-mounted Knights of the White Wolf, the very best of their order are selected by the Grand Master to undergo a rigorous set of physical and mental trials, and those who succeed are inducted into the R. Ulrich's personal bodyguard, joining him on campaign and protecting Middenheim's inner sanctum, during times of peace or siege. It's a very prestigious position, amongst the highest accolades an Imperial Knight can hope to achieve, and a stepping stone towards induction into the Felwolf Brotherhood, the Order's inner circle, made up of its deadliest and most experienced champions. This is where the flavorful army list of Ulrich comes into play. So here is a simple overview by the real Chef Boyardee that includes many of the Cult of Ulrich's unique units included in the Storm of Chaos expansion. I would not translate everything on this page directly into Warhammer 3, as that big red X might indicate, but it gives a nice snapshot of what to expect from the roster. You might notice that Tawny isn't on this page, and therein lies the big question. What to do about Graf Boris Toddbringer, Electric Count of Midland? Obviously, he's already in the game and playable, so what could he need, and in what capacity should he be included in a Cult of Ulrich update? Right off the bat, I'll say I'm not a fan of making him a Headliner Legendary Lord for a paid DLC, but I'm the fact that, as we just said, he's already in the game. He should be a free LC character that gets an updated model, an updated and unique skill tree, and his own star position in Midland, one that he could easily share with the R. Ulrich. Worst comes to worst, you can start either of them out on Crusade somewhere in the Drakwald, looking for Kazrak One-Eye or further abroad, or just plop them in Carrollburg, drumming up support from the troops to the southwest of Middenheim. Carrollburg, of course, being the site of a powerful imperial fortress and garrison, plays host to quite a few famous regiments and knightly chapter houses, including the headquarters of the Knight's Panther, which is a unit that should absolutely come with this update. One of the most powerful knightly orders in the Empire, they are a secular order dedicated to the eradication of mutants and chaos worshippers, with an illustrious history dating back to the Crusades and to Araby some 2,000 years ago. They have a staunch presence in Mindenheim, Carrollburg, and Talibheim in particular, and often serve as bodyguards to Boris Toddbringer. So where the Knights of the White Wolf are famous for their giant warhammers from horseback, a slower, heavier-hitting, and armor-piercing option that can sustain itself in prolonged melee, performing and behaving like a melee cavalry unit, the Knight's Panther would be a bonus versus large unit with lances ideal for dealing with chaos spawn, Beastmen monsters, and enemy cab like Sensigors. 
Similar stat profile to Rice Guard or Knights of the Blazing Sun, but more specialized for dealing with mutants and monsters. Obviously, there will be some overlap here in their role alongside all the other Knights of the Empire, but this is an important facet of the Imperial roster that has not been explored nearly enough yet. Knights are a big part of the Empire. We should have most of the main ones at the very least. And I'd argue you really can't do a DLC like this justice without including both Knights Panther and Knights of the White Wolf. Tudigan Guard would be a dismounted variant of the Knights of the White Wolf, armed with great hammers with a heavy dose of AP, They'd have larger charge bonus, weapon strength, and overall stats than great swords, but they'd function more like an anti-armor generalist and would be less specialized for cutting through infantry. Wouldn't mind seeing great swords get a buff though as well. They are an elite unit. They aren't terrible, but I feel like they could probably use a little bit of a boost. In the hero slot, warrior priests of Ulrich or wolf priests are the obvious choice. There are three aspects from the divine lore of Ulrich, the Snow King, the White Wolf, and the Blood Hand, and so I'd like to see two spells or abilities from each to help reflect that. The Snow King spells naturally focus on winter, chilling auras and ice storms called down while the priest chants his battle dirges. The White Wolf would focus on melee buffs and inspiring auras for allies, and the Blood Hand would embrace the berserker aspects of their faith, with physical resistance, frenzy, rampage, those kinds of thematic traits. Heavily armed and armored, They'd be more like aggressive versions of Sigmarite Warrior Priests, focused more on attack, less on defense. On the lower end of the Cult of Ulrich are the rank-and-file mob, the Wolfkin. While the flagellants of Sigmar might wander around cities bleeding about their offenses and hitting each other with sticks, the followers of Ulrich take a different path. Those who become convinced of their own or the world's sinfulness become berserk warriors who travel the Northern Empire looking for trouble, then fighting it head-on. These are Ulrican versions of flagellants, rampaging tar pits that will die easily, but won't necessarily be a simple task to get rid of, because there will be a lot of them rampaging in your face, swarming and dragging down their opponents while the heavy hitters maneuver to put you into an early grave. If we take a look again at the army roster overview from Storm of Chaos, the theme is generally focused around AP shock troops, heavy hitting, slow and cumbersome, almost a reflection of the Warriors of Chaos playstyle, and a melee focus around knights and heavy armor would be a fun and unique playstyle compared to the artillery and gunpowder play of Reichland and Nuln, the skirmishing of Marcus Wolfhart, and the magic of Balthazar Gelt. I do not think Children of Ulrich or Hunting Hounds would be necessary in this update whatsoever. Werewolves in general are kind of a no-no in Imperial armies. They are very much tainted by chaos. It would feel very weird to have them, even though they are technically canon and I'd rather Norska keep their unique skin wolves. And hounds in general are a unit archetype the Empire really shouldn't have. They use knights and artillery for dealing with an opponent's back line, not cheap, expendable dogs, which are already on a ton of other rosters. But yeah, that is what a Cult of Ulrich DLC would look like. It's one that I absolutely expect to see within the next two Empire updates, and, and one that will really benefit them both in terms of start positions and overall campaign and unit variety and diversity. They have a lot to offer, so let me know what you think and if there are any specific characters or units you believe should be included, and I'll see you all tomorrow with these skulls for the Skull Throne event and patch 3.1. Lots of cool stuff to cover for a bunch of different games. See you then.